Hey, what's up guys? It's Neil, and today I'm going to be talking about why I'm vegan and why I believe essentially everyone in first world countries should go vegan. I ask you to go into this video with an open mind and not to watch this video if you're just looking for an argument. All the facts that I will be including, I will have sources for those in the description down below, so I'm not just making it up any of these figures on the spot, and you can fact check anything that I said by going to those links. So this video is going to be split up into three different parts, health, environment, and ethics, and those are the three main reasons that I believe people should go vegan. So let's start off by just dispelling some myths people have about vegans being nutrient deficient or not getting all the nutrients that they need. So one thing that people worry about a lot when going vegan is protein. Now protein is really a non-issue. Pretty much everything that people eat contains protein. Even if you were to eat just 2,000 calories of pure bread, you would be getting almost 80 grams of protein. The USDA recommends that people get 40 to 50 grams, depending on if they're male or female, of protein a day. So even if you're just eating bread, you're getting almost double the amount of protein that you actually need in your diet. Pretty much the only nutrient that vegans actually have a hard time getting is vitamin B12. B12 is actually naturally only found in dirt and like dirty water. Non-vegans will get this from grass-fed beef or something like that. Unless you're eating like dirty vegetables or something like that, vegans have a hard time getting it. But that's also not a huge problem because you just get a multivitamin and make sure that it contains vitamin B12 and you're fine. So not only is it safe to be vegan, but studies actually show that vegans live longer than meat eaters. A study published in the Internal Medicine Journal shows that vegans live longer than those who eat meat and eggs, and every 3% increase in calories from plant protein reduces the risk of death by 10%. The number 10% is sort of hard to understand, so another study shows that vegetarian men on average live 7.28 years longer than meat-eating men, and vegetarian women on average live 4.42 years longer than meat-eating women. So we can see that vegans and vegetarians live longer, but why? Vegans are shown to have lower blood pressure, better moods, a lower risk of heart disease, a lower risk of cancer, a lower risk of diabetes, and are less likely to be overweight. The World Health Organization labels red and processed meats as a class 1 carcinogen, putting them in the same category as cigarettes. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in America, and it is caused by cholesterol, by high cholesterol. Vegan diets contain no cholesterol whatsoever, and although it was previously thought that there was no way to reverse heart disease, scientists have actually recently discovered that if you simply remove cholesterol entirely from someone's diet, aka a vegan diet because vegan diets contain no cholesterol, it will actually reverse the heart disease by allowing the body to cure itself. In addition to heart disease, a vegan diet can help prevent 14 out of the top 15 causes of death. These are the top 15 causes of death, the f top 15 reasons Americans die. And a plant-based diet can help prevent nearly all of them, can help treat more than half of them, and in some cases even reverse the progression of disease, including our top three killers. Now, there are drugs that can help too, right? You can take one drug to treat uh, cholesterol every day for the rest of your life, another drug for blood sugars, uh, a few more pills for, uh, for, your, for your blood pressure. Right? The same diet, though, does it all, right? It's not like, you know, one diet for this and then a different diet for this, right? One diet to rule them all. So based on everything I just said, not only is a vegan diet completely safe, but it will actually greatly increase your life expectancy. This means that if you choose to eat animal products, it is not because you need to do so for your health or because it's some necessity for you. It's because of reasons like taste, convenience, tradition, and or habit. So essentially, if you eat animal products, it's for your own pleasure, not for your own need. If you want to learn more about the health impacts of eating animal products, you can watch the documentary Forks Over Knives, which is on Netflix. There's a new documentary, What the Health. You should check out nutritionfacts.org, and I'll leave 
resources like this in the description down below. So now that we've talked about health, let's talk about the environment. When people think of what contributes to climate change, they usually think about the burning of fossil fuels for power, power plants or the burning of gasoline for transportation. In reality, a World Watch study estimates that livestock and their byproducts account for at least 51% of carbon dioxide emissions. In comparison, all of transportation combined only accounts for about 13% of greenhouse gas emissions. Livestock such as cows also produce methane gas, which has been shown to warm the planet 86 times as much as carbon dioxide. <laughs> Animals are force bred to fit the world's demand for animal products, resulting in extremely unnatural population sizes. So the problem is that we are farming these animals, and if we were to stop farming these animals, then we would not have this problem. In addition to greenhouse gas emissions, animal agriculture uses more than half of the water in the U.S. Not even including the water directly fed to animals, growing feed for livestock uses 56% of all water in the U.S. So people will take extra short showers to reduce their use of water, but then go on to eat a steak without even thinking about it. In reality, it takes about the same amount of water to shower for six months as it does to produce just one pound of beef. We are using so much of our water in the US and around the world for animal agriculture and to fit this growing need for animal products. Believe it or not, 45% of the Earth's total land is covered by livestock and growing feed for livestock. Seven billion people on this Earth, and we're, we need more and more space for it, but so much of this land is being taken up by livestock and livestock feed. 91% of Amazon rainforest clearing is to open up land for livestock. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of species extinction, ocean dead zones, water pollution, and habitat destruction. As you can see, animal agriculture must be taken more seriously as a major contributor to climate change. Probably the easiest way for an individual to make a significant impact on the environment is to stop eating animal products, and thus stop supporting many of the industries that are destroying the world around us. If you want to learn more about the environmental impact of animal agriculture, a video that you should definitely check out, or a documentary rather, is the documentary Cowspiracy, which is on Netflix. Alright, so now it's time for me to talk about ethics, and this is probably the most opinionated section of this video with the health and environmental sections. It was mostly just facts that I was throwing out at, the, at you guys, but ethics are subjective. So I'm just going to share my opinions along with some facts about animal intelligence and stuff like that. Before I sort of get into the philosophical aspects of animal rights and all that, I just want to quickly talk about why dairy and eggs are just as inhumane to produce as meat is. Whole videos can be and have been made about this topic, and you can check out my video on why dairy is unethical. But to oversimplify it, females in both industries are artificially inseminated, so there is no need for males. When male chicks are born, they are killed, often within minutes of coming into the world. Common ways to kill them include putting them into a meat grinder alive, suffocating them in plastic bags, or simply throwing them away and waiting for them to die of starvation. Similarly, male calves are torn away from their mothers within days of being born and either killed for veal or sold to the beef industry. The cow and chicken mothers, after being overworked for their entire lives, are killed when they are still the equivalent of a teenager because at this point their production of eggs or milk slows. Going vegetarian is a good stepping stone towards compassionate living, but because of the way cows and chickens are treated, it should not be the end goal. So our society is very conflicting. On one hand, many of us grow up with pets that are just as much a part of our family as any human member of our family. We would never let anyone hurt our dog or cat or any other animal around us because it is our nature to be compassionate to anyone, no matter their species. On the other hand, if you're like me, you also grew up eating pigs and cows and chickens and fish without putting much thought into what actually happens to those animals. 
Most of us understand that dogs can have complex human-like emotions and form relationships with other dogs and humans and other animals. But pigs, for instance, who are actually more intelligent than dogs and as intelligent as a three-year-old child, we never think of as individuals. <laughs> From a young age, we are taught to discriminate against certain beings for no real valid reason. And I believe we cannot entirely eliminate human discrimination until we eliminate this overlooked, hypocritical thinking that is implanted in us as children. The animals that are killed for us and the food on our plates are so separated that there is no place along the line for us to feel the compassion that we naturally feel towards other beings. I thought about including slaughterhouse footage in this video because it's very effective for some people, but I decided not to because not everyone wants to or needs to see graphic footage. I do encourage you to watch some slaughterhouse footage, including the documentary Earthlings, in order to actually be able to empathize with these sentient beings that we are so separated from. If you decide that this isn't something you feel comfortable doing, I ask you, how can you essentially pay people to kill animals? if you aren't even willing to see what they're going through for your pleasure. For you, it's just a meal, but for them, it's their entire existence that is being taken away from them. People often say it's a personal choice to eat meat, but when you think about the victims involved, it really isn't. Personal choices are choices that only affect you, but when you choose to eat meat and other animal products, it's affecting the lives of other animals. Sometimes people will understand that animals are be being treated unfairly and opt for animal products with labels like free range, natural, grass fed, humane, etc. But the problem is not that these animals are being fed corn instead of grass, or that they need an extra three inches of living space. The problem is that we are choosing for them whether they live or die. People might say that we treat other animals different from us because they're less intelligent. But like I said before, dogs are less intelligent than pigs, and the stuff that we do to pigs would be illegal if we did it to dogs. Intelligence isn't really the most important driving factor in how we should treat someone. We shouldn't ask, can they think comple complex thoughts? Can they form relationships? What we should really only be asking is, can they suffer? And even in the case of bugs or, or fish. Some people think fish aren't able to suffer or, or lobsters. They, they all have the ability to suffer and because of that they, they should be given the same very basic rights that we are given of, of life and the pursuit of happy, happiness. If you want to learn more about the ethics of eating animals, I suggest watching, like I said earlier, the documentary Earthlings, and I suggest watching a short Crash Course philosophy video hosted by Hank Green about sort of the philosophy of eating non-human animals, and another video that sort of encompasses all the health aspects and the environmental impacts and the ethical philosophy of eating animals is a speech made by Gary Urofsky. It's, you can look it up, it'll also be in the description down below. It's called the best speech ever, best speech you'll ever hear, and it really encompasses everything that I've said today, but it's even more comprehensive and it's about an hour long speech and it's, this video is pretty much the main driving factor for why I went vegan. So that's pretty much it for this video. I had a lot to fit in in what I wanted to be a pretty short video, so I'll link to all the documentaries on health, environment, ethics, and the 
speech by Gary Yurofsky in the description down below if you want to learn more. I hope this video helped change your perspective in some way, and to me, if one person sees this video and decides to go vegan, I feel like this video has been a success because it saves so many animals for just one person to go vegan. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.